Creating value and expanding your leadership skills will be the main topics of the discussion for this incredible show, two areas we all need to focus on. Andy McDowell is an engineer by trade and a creative by nature. He spent 22 years with the Boeing company where he always felt more like a life coach than a boss. In 2002, he began his journey into entrepreneurship within a corporation when he was asked to develop an airspace design consulting business from scratch that would serve the global environment market. Andy earned his bachelor's degree from Georgia Tech in electrical engineering, and then a master's degree in computer information systems from Georgia State. Naturally, his aviation work took him around the world and enabled him to work on high profile projects, such as preparing the Beijing and Sochi airports for their respective Olympic games. Some areas we will discuss today are the impact creativity has on value, business tools and concepts that improve our lives, the fundamental notions that all humans should embrace to generate their value, how the leadership of others starts with leading yourself, the why, what, and how of starting a business if you're a new entrepreneur listening on, and so much more. So welcome back to That Entrepreneur Show. My name is Vincent A. Lancey, and I am at Vincent A. Lancey on all social media, YouTube, along with my website, vincentalancey.com. If it's your first show with us, welcome each week since December 2019. I've had the privilege of interviewing the founder of a company or a brand from all around the world to let you know what worked well for them, where they needed to improve, and every learning lesson along the way. I also offer bonus episodes with this series, including the Gasparilla Overload that just passed featuring Florida entrepreneurs, and of course, Rewind the Clock episodes where I bring back previous guests who continue to make headlines. You never know which motivational journey will inspire you most. This segment is sponsored by Bedrock Business Builders, a small business startup specialist. Start, build, manage. I am really excited to learn about this journey. We were trying to nail down a date for some time and we finally locked in a calendar date. Andy McDowell, thank you very much for joining this community of entrepreneurs. Uh, thanks very much, Vincent. It's great to be here and uh, hopefully our conversation will add some value to somebody's life or business journey in, um, in some way. It absolutely will. Would you mind giving a preview to who Andy is before we dive into the entrepreneurship talk? Uh, well, so you already stated sort of my bio, so to speak. So that's already been stated. So let me talk about uh, the innards of Andy McDowell, if you will. So um, I'm a little bit different than most people from the sense that I can handle technical, complex topics. You know, I have uh, two technical degrees. I'm a co-author on two patents. Uh, you know, sort of that left-sided brain, but uh, I'm also a photographer, a singer, and a musician uh, for that right brain kind of side creativity aspect. And I, I like to dive into those to always try and keep that creativity alive in my life mm -hmm. uh, from that perspective, because I, I feel like you need both sides to truly create a tremendous amount of value in the world. And I'm sure we'll get into that in our our time together today, but uh, uh, anybody can go to my LinkedIn page and look at all the things you had stated in the intro, but, you know, to get a glimpse, sort of look under the covers of who Andy McDowell is, that's, uh, that's who I am. I'm excited to learn everything that went on behind the scenes, especially as I just said in the introduction, your company asked you to begin something from scratch. So you were diving into entrepreneurship before you were diving into entrepreneurship, which is how we linked up today, because now you do your own business. But I would love mm -hmm. to backtrack. How did this all start? What was going through your mind? And hopefully you can give our listeners some learning lessons out of there. Yeah, so entrepreneurship has different faces, right? <laughs> yes. Different ways it presents itself. So my whole journey uh, has been entrepreneurial in nature in that coming out of uh, my grad work, um, I worked for two small entrepreneurial companies as an employee, um, the last of which got purchased by uh, Jeppesen, who then got turned around a year later and got bought by Boeing, uh, in which, as you stated, I was asked to build a business from scratch within a corporation. So how do you act as an entrepreneur 
within a company that's the largest exporter in the United States in terms of dollars. Um, that has thousands of employees around the world. And then to finally leave that company and start your own business and be a solo entrepreneur. So there's, there's multiple faces of entrepreneurship and it's really, in my opinion, about a spirit. It's about a mindset like that. And uh, it takes a lot of resilience and grit to be successful in it. And, you know, don't get stuck on, thinking that entrepreneurship is just one animal. It's a multi facet of different animals that can take different forms. And, you know, if you think you have that right spirit and mindset, look at all those type options uh, for which one you want to explore um, in your career. And I think there's learning lessons that come out of each stage and can propel you in the next as experience Mm -hmm. does. Now let's talk about, your own solo entrepreneur as you said eventually it switched lanes and that's where you ended up let's shed some light on all the great work you're doing now yeah so one of my favorite things to do when i was with um with boeing and what really got me out of bed in the morning was uh helping people to grow and find success in their life Um, you've made a decision to come work for boeing and hopefully that can add some value to your journey to find that for yourself Uh, So uh, being a mentor and helping to be a guide in people's lives was what really brought joy and happiness to my life. So I always was hoping I'd have a 30 year career with Boeing and then uh, do it on a part time basis. But, you know, the Boeing 737 Max had a different opinion on that on that journey. Uh, So now I do it full time. But. You know, people ask me what I do. I say I build people and I build businesses. You know, I don't say, at least not outright first, say I'm a life leadership and small business coach. It's more about what do I do and what impact and value do I bring to the world? And I think that statement says it more succinctly than, you know, a title like a lawyer or an accountant or a project manager or whatever, which is just a title. It's about more about, okay, what value are you bringing to the world? And can you use that as a lead in statement to further the conversation with somebody? You come to learn on your journey that you can't do everything by yourself. Mm-hmm. It's too, too heavy of a load uh, in most cases to do it. And you really need, just as they say, you need a village to raise a, a child or a village to raise a family or whatever. You need a village to raise a business. Mm -hmm. And the key is to um, going inside yourself and understanding your strengths and weaknesses, uh, where your joys are and where your fears are and finding the support you need and your weaknesses and your fears uh, to support, you know, the strengths and the joys and happiness you do have in your life to help you raise that business. I so like speak. That. Don't be afraid to ask questions. That's something I learned young. Ask questions. There's someone who's already did it. I've also learned that genuinely or generally people are happy to help you. They may not be in a position to buy something from you right now or want to buy mm-hmm. something from you. But if you're asking advice, I found that people are very helpful because I know, at least in my life, there's been plenty of people who have helped me and most people want to do pay it forward. I like how you highlighted that there, Andy. Thank you so much. But as we just mentioned, there are a lot of things in entrepreneurship, a lot of hats we have to wear, a lot of jobs we have to have. What are two of the most difficult parts for you? For me? Um, Well, the biggest one which I knew going into it was my network Mm -hmm. was global in nature. You know, a third to half of my uh, year in the life at Boeing was traveling around the world, helping governments bring GPS into their flight and ground operations. Mm -hmm. Uh, And all my contacts, whether they be within the industry or through my customers or whatever was global in nature. And now all of a sudden um, I'm putting that on the shelf, so to speak, and bringing in small business, uh, mostly at local level, if not state and regional kind of basis where I didn't spend a whole lot of time. Mm -hmm. So I knew it was going to be a challenge for me to get myself rooted within that network and that environment to start finding 
customers who could use um, my services to help them out. That was probably the biggest uh, challenge for me. And then second is probably just time management. You know, once again, you're, you're by yourself and trying to, you know, you have 40, 50, 60 hours in a day and, or in a week, and you're trying to figure out what your priorities are um, at a given time and what you're willing to give up to others to, to help you out with and what you want to keep. Mm -hmm. I, like, I put that in my notes right here for the end when I highlighted what I loved because I love the time management and guests bring that up. It seems very obvious, right? We have to manage our time, but it is not that easy in entrepreneurship because something is always coming up. The next email could take priority, even though mm -hmm. I try to do FIPO first in, first out. I try just to keep things in the order they come in, but I time block. I'm a big time blocker in my day. It's 3 a.m. to 3 p.m. is my main time block. That's my solid 12. I can't push much more anymore. I tried, but then burnout crept up on me years ago. But mm -hmm. I prioritize everything I do. I find if I'm organized, I'm able to accomplish more. I'm able to get more done in the day because I'm not scrambling, thinking of things to do. You did a great job with encouraging our listeners to time block, time management, anything that works for you. Try to make your life just a little bit easier. We already touched a little bit on not being afraid to ask questions, talking to people. What is one of your greatest lessons learned, Andy, that you could share with our audience so they can learn from you? Um, don't be afraid to fail. I mean, I know it's discussed a lot um, out there in the industry and in the podcasts and whatnot, but it, it truly is true. Don't be afraid to fall down or fall off the horse and get back on. Uh, it's about the journey. Enjoy the journey as you're going along. Um, and build up your strengths relative to resilience and grit and don't take it personally um, yeah. from that perspective and just keep going. I love the encouragement. You have to. Because usually high. you're just around the corner from success. I mean, I know it sounds mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of cliche, but it truly is. I mean, I'm. Yeah, I'm living that dream right at the moment where I am in my entrepreneurial journey for my my business. I, I feel like it's just around the corner and taste it and I could just fold up now just out of frustration and say, no, keep going, keep going. You know, it's just around the corner and it'll soon arrive for you. Let's talk about that a little more. What do you what do you write around the corner? What's the next announcement from you? With what you're working on? Uh, it will probably be my book. Uh, hopefully fingers crossed later this year or early next year um, my my uniqueness in the coaching world is uh, I've developed a methodology that's built off of business strategy tools to help um, individuals and business leaders develop a life strategy for themselves mm -hmm. uh, it's built off the premise that as human beings, we all have needs and guess what? Businesses are set up to address needs in the world. So why can't you make that translation from business strategy tools into life strategy tools that can be a guide for you? Uh, you can visit everywhere every year, like you would a, a business strategy uh, to get you where, where you're going. And that will be, you know, a big part of the book that I'm writing is to help showcase those tools. And then, Oh, by the way, if you're good at that with your self-leadership, then you already have exposure to the tools. You can then turn around and write a great business plan, and uh, a business strategy for your business, and you'd already be comfortable with the tools. I look forward to the book. So everyone already knows that there is a preview to Writing with Authors, my YouTube show, coming with Andy as soon as he's ready to release it. I'd like to now ask you, though, Andy, do you have a greatest failure from over your career where you could share with our audience or a lesson learned that they can learn from? Uh, greatest failure. I don't know. Sometimes I felt like whenever somebody left my team, it was, <laughs> their finger was pointing at me. What was I, was I not, um, a good enough manager for the person that they didn't want to stay? Uh, cause you know, statistically speaking, the relationship with your manager is the number one reason why somebody leaves. And so at times I get down on myself, like, did I fail this person per se, when the reality is they may have had other different reasons. Maybe something's going on with a spouse or the family that they didn't reveal to you, it was driving the decision or those type things. But um, 
I don't know if it was a true failure. Sometimes the failure was in, was in my brain and overthinking things, but um, as somebody who had a servant leadership model and just wanted to the best for, Mm -hmm. for his people and trying to help them find joy and happiness in their life. And they leave uh, without a conversation ahead of time and saying, this was a planned event. Mm -hmm. Boeing can only take, take it so far and what you want out of your career in life. And we're, we're already planning on you leaving and going to a different type of mm-hmm. industry or job. That's okay. That was playing in the books and uh, keep in touch. And we're cheering you on from afar. But when you leave out of the blue, um, did I do something wrong or did I do not something strong enough in sure. our relationship to keep you around? Thank you for encouraging having the conversations. Communication is everything. And unfortunately, lack of communication does lead to various problems. I appreciate you being aware that you need to be there for your employees, have a good relationship with them, because I'm sure that does go a long way with the employees you do have in place. I was a finance major, MBA. Out of all my stops along the way, PwC, Merrill Lynch, you name it, I never really had a good relationship with my manager or mentor. They were really just a delegating type door closed policy, you could say. Mm-hmm. And you really need that door open policy because once I'm able to get the nerves out of the way and learn how to do things the, the first few times correctly, I probably won't need to use your assistance anymore. So I really appreciate you highlighting that. Yeah, I would say the same thing for my career. I even had one, um, one boss who for two years in a row didn't even give me a performance review for the year. His idea of one was just to hand me a slip of paper with what my pay increases for the next year. Yeah, I like to learn. For me, reflection is very key. As a solopreneur with a budget, of course, I have to really think and step back and see how things are going. On this show, for example, the first year, it was just kind of running through the motions. I was still a little nervous when I look back at my progress. I'm very happy how far I've come, but it makes you cringe those first couple episodes hearing how. Even though I'm from New York, really, really fast talking in the beginning and feeling so structured and rating off the talking points like question one, question two. But you live and you learn. You don't know how to improve until you fail. Like you said, don't be afraid to fail. I now want to delve a little deeper into your brain, Andy. If you could pick any entrepreneur, dead or alive, to learn from, who are you choosing? Ooh. Um, Well, I'm a huge Simon Sinek fan. I often use his work. Uh, in my coaching, yes, that's number one book um, uh, in, in my life and my career. Uh, I picked up that book and uh, we're talking about start with why. I held up Cynic. to start with why, yeah, yeah. you said cynic. Um, a lot of what he laid out there uh, it had been my thoughts through the years. And even when I sat down and developed my first life plan, it was centered around the whole why, how, what questions and then when the book came out i read it in like a day and was just pumping my fist and everything saying okay i have some validation of what my thoughts were and with the success that simon's had with that book and his philosophy and thoughts and everything uh just gives gives me more and more confidence that the way i did things in the past and the way i'm trying to do things with people in the future is just gonna be long lasting and bring value into their lives so Love it. Anybody ever asks what's the one book or whatever, that's the one I always go to is start with that book. I had someone interview me and they posted it in like an Instagram format. And my question was favorite book. And that was my choice just to take away from it. I'm getting ready to read it again once I finish the three books I already have in progress. But if you could pick the meeting place for you and Simon, where would you pick the meeting to go down? Who? <laughs> um... A top of a mountain. Clear thoughts. I like that. Well, I don't care how high the mountain is just to have that, you know, that purview of being able to have a 360 degree view of the world and have that as an environment with which to share some thoughts and have some discussion and that that feeling of abundance. Yes. And that's how we keep going. Keep yourself inspired. Find a way to do it. Thank you so much, Andy. I couldn't think of a better time to get into the spotlight story. For everyone joining us for the very first time, 
around this part of the episode each week, my guest and I go over another entrepreneur's journey to give you a fresh perspective. But for today, we're going to talk about an incredible article I found that resonates with today's guest titled, Why You Should Strive to Be an Entrepreneurial Engineer. And I chose this because when I was previewing the articles that it started out with throughout my career as an engineer, I've worked with and managed all types of people. Each personality provides different perspectives, qualities, and contributions to a diverse team to help it succeed. And from my meeting today's guests, when they reached out with their one sheet, I just thought this would be a great fit. And we're going to talk about some of the highlights now. Four ways to start performing as an entrepreneurial engineer are be an out-of-the-box problem solver. Be a team player and excellent collaborator. Be flexible and be resilient. And we're going to talk about this with our guests in just a second, but we're going to touch on being out of the box problem solver. Entrepreneurial engineers are creative out of the box problem solvers. And part of being that problem solver is being a deep thinker, understanding the problem in depth, dedicating time with your team to brainstorm solutions and thinking creatively about long-term optionality. Often it means reimagining re the traditional way of doing something and creating a brand new path. Like a true entrepreneur, of course, a good problem solver also understands the priorities of the business and is laser focused on them. Being in tune with business priorities makes you in tune with the overall company vision and enables you to see the big picture, not just the tactical work before you, Andy, what are your takeaways on these four ways to become an entrepreneurial engineer? Any firsthand experience you'd like to share? Well, first of all, I'll say all four items uh, refer to entrepreneurship period. They're, they're foundational yes. elements of being an entrepreneur. I don't care whether you're an engineer or not um, from that perspective. And it goes back to our earlier discussion about mindset and values and all those things as, a, as an entrepreneur. So I felt like the article was spot on. but particularly going to the first one, what I'd like to share is my father gave me, uh, my father had a corporate career in sales, retiring as a VP of sales for a large corporation. And the two pieces of advice that I've taken to heart in my life, uh, one is uh, Roosevelt's um, in the arena speech. And if you don't know what that is, just Google those words and it'll pop up. Uh, it's sort of, uh, to me, a mantra for entrepreneurs uh, from that perspective. But the number two piece of advice was on the day I got that piece of parchment in my hand from Georgia Tech with an electrical engineering degree. And he said, uh, son, I just want you to know that just because you can build it doesn't mean you can sell it. And it was a way of expressing that there's a new a number of ways to uh, solve a problem pure engineering wise, but if there's not a need in the world, certainly on a grand scale of need, you'll never be able to sell it. And all the expense and time and everything you put into the engineering side uh, isn't going to matter. I had to write that um, And quote I've had down. that ringing in my ears and in my head every single day of my career from that perspective. And, sort of fueled my creativity, fueled my uh, strength I developed in business strategy and so forth. And everything I was looking at was or at throwing the question out, okay, I know we can technically do this, but does it bring value to the world and does it deliver on a need that the world has? If it doesn't, then put it on a shelf. I love because that. That need, that need made show up in five years, 10 years, 20 years, it could be. And in my case, uh, I knew of a need that was in the marketplace, um, but the technology that was necessary to deliver on it was still five, 10 years out. So all I could do within Boeing was just plant these little seeds, these little popcorn kernels along the way for people to be thinking about waiting for that technology to show, to show up, you know, and, and that technology was what we now know is cloud computing. Uh, and it's now here. And that's when I really started pushing it within Boeing. It didn't go very far because of the culture, but right. um, I, I think number one in that article and what really rang in my ear when I was reading to 
you know, after you had sent it to me was that phrase that having my father in my ear, uh, just because you can build it, you have the technical means to build it doesn't mean you can sell it because you have to address a need in the world. And what you really need to do is, even though we want to work on things and fix things as an engineer, is to reverse engineer it and look for problems first that you know you have the potential to sell and make money on, whether it's a service or a product, and then work backwards through the engineering piece to know whether you can deliver on it. I love it. I love everything you said. And I like to look at things, fix the problems before you get going in case by case scenario. But I had type up before, just because you can build it doesn't mean you can sell it. Be very conscious of how you spend your time and think outside the box like Andy just taught us to do. So thank you for that. And thank you so much for a powerful episode overall. You started out with emphasizes that, hey, you wear a lot of hats. Don't discount anything you do. The time management, of course, we talked about with the time block. And you made it know that you can be successful and you still overthink sometimes. Just try to be conscious not to do so. And you also encourage the power of communication. I'd like to now stop you for your last word before we find out how to get in touch with you. Uh, my last word is about creativity and risk. We as human be beings naturally have creativity in ourselves. And I, I get really flustered with people that say, well, I'm just not the creative type. Well, your life, you're creating your life. You know, when you decide what you're going to have for dinner, you're being creative. I mean, it gets down to that simple and small of an issue. And you can't start generating value in the world, whether it be in your relationships and your business or whatever, without being creative. So think outside the box, yes. At that, well, sometimes even thinking within the box. Um, but how, how are you generating value? How are you? How are you addressing needs in the world, whether it's in your relationship with your spouse or your children or your friend in your community that surrounds you uh, in your career and in your business? And yet, do you have a life strategy and are you working on yourself constantly utilizing your creativity to generate value in the world? And when you do that, guess what happens? Joy and happiness shows up in your life. Well said. Andy, how can everybody find you, find what you're working on, or say hello? Uh, the main way is through my website, www.generateyourvalue.com. I also have a podcast with a co-host with the same name, Generate Your Value, is the easiest ways to find me. I am on all four of the major platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Thank you for sharing that, everyone. Be sure to go check out everything Andy has to offer. He certainly inspired me a whole lot this morning. We are at That Entrepreneur Show on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. But because of the character limit, we are at Podcasts by Lancey on Twitter. I am at Vincent A. Lancey on all social media, YouTube, and my website is VincentALancey.com. My latest book is Mental Health Week. Be sure to check it out for the elementary school students in your life. And we will, of course, end with a quote that inspired me. And this one is from Leonardo da Vinci. I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Being willing is not enough. We must do. I love that quote. Thank you for tuning in. And we will see you next Friday on That Entrepreneur Show. Andy, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for the invite, Vincent, and uh, thanks for the value you're generating in this world. Thank you, Andy.